Hi, I'm James McGuire, editor of Datamation, and today we're talking about all sorts of cloud-related topics, uh, cloud foundry, the hybrid cloud uh, platform as a service. To talk about that, we're joined by a major thought leader in the field, James Waters, Senior Vice President of Product for Pivotal. Hey, James, how are you doing today? Hey, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Good, good. And you are here in, uh, in, in cloudy, rainy San Francisco today, right? That's right. Uh, you know, put the hoodie up to get into work. You know, and uh, they wonder why people in San Francisco wear hoodies till they see the weather. Seriously. So I, I want to talk about you know where Pivotal is going, where the cloud is going. But let's just do a, a little nutshell on Pivotal itself. Uh, I have a few factoids here, and correct me if any of these are are wrong. Uh, Pivotal employs more than two thousand people in twenty offices around the world. In two thousand fifteen. Pivotal generated more than $267 million in revenue. That's, that's from Inc. Magazine, if that's to be believed. Uh, <laughs> one, one, of, one, of, one of Pivotal's uh, chief uh, offerings is Cloud Foundry. It's an op op open source platform as a service. Yeah. Uh, it enables the companies to build cloud native apps, apps that run on Amazon Web Services, Azure, or Google Platform. Uh, it's basically it's, it's the multi-cloud world tool. So what, what am I leaving out there? What, what, when, when cloud customers are thinking about Pivotal, what should they be thinking of in terms of how they can use Pivotal? Yeah, yeah, I think that's a that's a good intro, and uh, we we are an open source centric company. We have two core open source projects at the at least two at the core of that uh, cloud platform called Cloud Foundry and uh, Spring Source, mm -hmm. both of which are open source projects. And then we combine all of that into one larger platform called Pivotal Cloud Foundry that goes the whole way from embedded operating systems, so you don't have to buy anything from Red Hat ever again. Uh, uh -huh. Cloud orchestration, you don't need Puppet and Chef. Um, middleware, you don't need IBM Web, IBM uh, WebSphere or Oracle WebLogic. Uh, load balancing and, and some API services. Um, the whole way up to then, you know, cloud native frameworks like Spring Boot, which is the most popular, uh, you know, Java framework for, you know, cloud apps in the world. You kind of put that all together and that's the Pivotal platform. Um, the fact that it can go to any cloud is very unique. But the most unique thing about it actually is its holistic vision. And then as a company, Pivotal takes that even further. We have something called Pivotal Labs, which is essentially <clears throat> immersive environments where you can come build with us cloud native applications. And so uh, you know, some of the largest companies in the world, Ford, for instance, you know, when they wanted to do their new connected car service, they chose our platform running on uh, multiple clouds. Uh, and then they also partner with Pivotal Labs in terms of executing those apps. So Pivotal, if you think about us as like the holistic player in the market, mm -hmm. I think is a good start. And, and certainly Pivotal has relationships with many different uh, vendors. Yeah. I mean, actually specific tech relationships with AWS, Azure and Google Cloud, uh, not to mention IBM, you know, et cetera, HP, I believe also. Yeah, I think, you know, we, we run on anything with an infrastructure API. So the way the system works, that holistic system I talked about is, give me some infrastructure that can automate with APIs. Like where a lot of, you know, complexity in current enterprise IT comes from is handmade environments. Even if you're using scripts to automate them, you still have humans involved in the creation of the platform or the creation of the environment. Mm -hmm. So we really come in and say, everything has to start with an API. Now, the beautiful thing is, is that, you know, five or six years ago when we started, there were very few cloud APIs around. Like it was essentially uh, the vSphere API we had and we even modified that and performance tuned that to be more, uh, you know, friendly. And then we had the emergence of the Amazon API. But the beautiful thing over the last two years is just that like Google and Azure come on strong, OpenStack is, is more present, and we run on all of those. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting, you know, with all the relationships that Pivotal has, I mean, it, it, it faces this competitive challenge in that, you know, on one hand, Pivotal is open source, portable, cloud, multi-cloud. Yeah. And it, it, it's, it's ideal for this hybrid cloud we seem to be going into. On yeah. the other hand, could, you know, certain people are gonna say, hey, wait a second, we could just use AWS. They have so many features. They roll out more features every single week. You know, Werner Vogel is going to take care of all our needs. All we need is Werner. So what, what, what do you say to those folks? That's certainly what Andy Jassy, you know, I talked to a lot of CIOs and they basically say, hey, you know, when I compare your pitch versus Andy Jassy's pitch, James, um, Andy is basically, when are you going to go all in like Netflix and just l let us essentially own you? You have to be pure Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the thing is, is that these large organizations, they really actually value choice over time. And they don't really want to be holding to one vendor. And the, you know, the doomsday scenario is that Andy's a brilliant, nice guy, but you don't want Andy to personally control Moore's law. 
<laughs> and uh, I, I say this in a friendly way, and this is what my CIO talk track is like, you know, if we only have Amazon as a cloud provider, and that's the only way we get infrastructure, like only when the dear leader gives us a discount <laughs> uh -huh. do, do we get access to Moore's Law. And, you know, so on my Twitter bio, I said, you know, believer in Moore's Law. Like, I think that's just fundamental to how we've made so much progress is that, you know, no one corporation has been able to slow down the advance of technology and control that. So that's well, why I think multi-cloud is fundamentally important. Wait, so, so Moore's Law is, you know, the number of transitions in, 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 in a circuit would double approximately every two years. How does that relate to An Andy Jassy? Yeah, so the, the price would go down. So you're, you're paying okay. about the same price for a CPU chip, right? So if Am Amazon says it's $10 for a compute unit, and they, uh -huh. have it, and they get to decide when it becomes $8 per compute unit. Right, okay. Remember, they're they're time slicing up all the chips that they buy from Intel with 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 VMs, right? And right. supplying that to you, and so they actually control the cost the cost of compute in a fundamental way. Whereas we're normally, even though you bought your server from, you know, put play it this way, we never think of it as a dramatic price cut when the server's twice as fast in two years in the hardware world. Right. But in the Amazon world, they come out with a price cut that gives you more compute power, and you're like, oh my gosh, I just got a price cut. Yeah, but of course, the, the price cut, I mean, that, that so-called ratio at the bottom seems more market-driven than it actually driven by the, the quality of the hardware. Yeah, I think, I think what's, what's essential is, is, that, is that they are controlling the cost of compute and your access to that compute over time. Right. And, you know, this became very real for Pivotal, you know, when we, we had a, uh, you know, eight-figure bill uh, for Amazon. Because you, you um, yourself were using Amazon as a customer, right? Yeah, we're a, we're a cloud platform. We have a host of service. We do all of our engineering, mostly 80% of engineering on cloud and 20% of it on a V block. Right. And uh, from, you know, parent company, Dell Technologies. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> the, the issue that hit, though, was we wrote and said, hey, we're getting to a huge volume here, Amazon. And all of our engineers are just doing on-demand instances. But couldn't you look in arrears and give us like a volume discount? A reasonable request by a customer and they, they this is their response and and i love those guys like i'm friends with them and i think they've done amazing things for the industry but the response right now from a sales negotiation perspective is you could never move we know <laughs> that you've wired yourself in there's no way you can get your engineers to move so you yeah. have no batna so you know enjoy your current pricing so so we're never going to get divorced so you have to like you know do the chores from now on that's all there is to it yeah, and to, to me, like just at a at a fundamental layer, I think that technology's dynamism. I mean, it's kind of the same issue that's going on right now with Facebook and the open web, which is that people are saying, "Hey, too much of the web is actually happening on Facebook right now," and that's near and dear to my heart, having started off in the networking world. Right. Kind of, I actually think multi cloud and the open web are shared sentiments that you don't want one monopoly provider who controls really important things. Well, I guess it's, you know, it, it's in, in theory, Pivotal would, would help uh, customers avoid vendor lock-in I mean, because it's sort of like, you know, if, if, I, if I quote that 70s rock song, meet the new boss, same as the old boss, you want to be able to avoid lock-in. But it's still, I mean, it's still major headaches and, and cost and, you know, blood, sweat and tears trying to change cloud vendors, is it not? No, I mean, so this is the thing with, with Pivotal, like we have a layer that's only driven by APIs. And so the developer experience is exactly the same between um, every cloud that you use that Pivotal runs on. So you couldn't tell the difference as a developer if you're suddenly on Google Cloud versus Amazon. And we were able to move in about a month and it blew everyone's mind. Oh, it's really that, that easy, you, seriously. It, when we were dealing with you know, uh, a major client, they said, okay, You've talked about multi-cloud. Let's move that app to Azure and do it the next day. We had it done in six hours. Basically, the time it took to install the platform and restart the app. Okay. I'm, and this I'm is this surprised whole, and impressed. Yeah, because this is this holistic automation that we have, which is that everything is just a virtual machine, a disk, or an IP address to us. Mm -hmm. And that holistic breadth has given us really the ability to give cloud choice in a, in a profound way. So what's coming up for Pivotal? And I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about the whole serverless computing craze, you know, AWS's Lambda uh, solution. I mean, how, what, what's, what's up for Pivotal and, and how do you relate to the whole serverless concept? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the really the elephant in the room, like, you know, like I said, multi-cloud is one of the things we do and it, it kind of generates a conversation. 
where you, 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 their you, 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 dropped, you dropped out for a sentence or so. Could you start that again, yeah. please? Sorry. Uh, can you hear me now? I can, yep. We help enterprises build and migrate to cloud applications. So if you look at the real enterprise challenge, it's far less multi-cloud in a sense. It's more of like, how do I enable my developers to start writing cloud applications that make sense in cloud? Mm -hmm. um, and Gartner came out and said, you know, I think pretty important thing that Java EE, which a lot of enterprise apps were written in, right. is essentially not cloud native and it's not cloud compatible. Mm -hmm. And they said that the whole Java EE movement would turn to a cloud native movement. And that's largely um, Pivotal's technology called Spring Boot. And the stuff we're doing with Spring Boot and Spring Cloud, the framework um, that, that brings Java programming to cloud applications. Um, so I, I think that's the first order topic is like, how do we actually help these enterprises build cloud native apps? And that's where between Spring and Pivotal Labs, we actually solve the first order problem, allowing them to run it on any infrastructure and get good rates they like. But really, the question is, how are they getting the cloud? You go to Amazon's convention now, there's a lot of like cloud migration SIs showing up. Mm -hmm. But the, the thing that's unique about Pivotal is we have an opinionated enough platform and framework that we actually can help you build those cloud apps versus sort of the lift and shift approach of, oh, I'm going to just dump it in a VM and hope for the best. Right. So wh what do you say to people who are, you know, they, they, they face this somewhat confusing cloud landscape? I, I would imagine you talk with a lot of customers that are thinking about their cloud strategy, not necessarily focused on one of the providers. Yeah. What kind of advice do you give them when they say, please, you know, James, help us make sense of the cloud landscape. Where should we go? What should we do? We, we usually start, start with first principles, which is this is really about application delivery. And, you know, if you think about this as pure of a hosting environment, then, yeah, maybe masking one or the other, you know, that's negligible. But where our platform really starts is, you know, continuous delivery and how you enable that. And so... Um, we measure application delivery performance. So we would come in and talk to a customer, like, how long does it take you to do a major deployment today? A lot of enterprises would say, hey, five, six, seven weeks at best. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of our customers, Gap, said that they went from doing deployments in weeks to doing deployments in under five minutes with Cloud Foundry. That's really our unique thing, is that the combination of cloud apps and continuous delivery can change the business. And, and then the benefit is a modern platform should be able to run on any, any cloud. Uh, so we would always start with like, let's get the application st strategy right first before we go attack infrastructure hosting. So it, it's faster, 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 and you, you can go out to any place you want to. Yeah. That's it. That's a baked in benefit. That's really not the lead benefit. Mm -hmm. So uh, wh wh where does it all go? Where, where is cloud itself going, even independent from Pivotal? I mean, it's what, what, what are we to be talking about, say, three to five years from now when we're talking about the cloud? What will be big coming up? And, and, and how, how should businesses incorporate that kind of knowledge into the strategy going forward? Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's so many dimensions that is changing. I mean, so mm -hmm. one, one dimension is, is that, you know, stacks like PCF have actually made private infrastructure viable again. Um, and, you know, this sounds counterintuitive that all these cloud apps, you know, just dealing with a customer yesterday, they're like, yeah, we've migrated all of our apps to the cloud. And they meant PCF. It was actually running in their own data center. But the automation and the self-service characteristics of PCF actually made their own data center a better experience and price competitive. And, and, and the, the acronym... Uh PCF, P uh, Pivotal Cloud Foundry. Pivotal Cloud Foundry. Okay, right. But it was, sure. it was interesting yeah. because in the customer's mind now, because of the characteristics and the performance and the automation and the self-service of PCF, mm -hmm. th they said, hey, we've migrated these apps to cloud. And, and, and I think that's another important counterbalance to this kind of runaway monopoly uh, potential that you have with a single provider in cloud. Mm -hmm. So I look at you know, the next five years of cloud as having both more public clouds coming into play, and also some consolidation and efficiencies coming to how people run private infrastructure that is more cloud-like and therefore efficient and can be price competitive. More couple, uh, public clouds coming into play. I was thinking that um, the pockets needed to be too deep. If you hadn't gotten into public cloud by now, you weren't going to. You mean some well, second tier players? No, no, no. D no Google, no. Google and Azure basically continuing their investments okay. and you know, challenging Amazon in a, in a significant way. Right. So I think that's definitely happening. And then also, you know, private infrastructure remains actually a, a pretty interesting vector for a lot of folks too. Yeah, private cloud, or, which is sometimes just known as regular old fashioned data centers, isn't going away, even though private cloud, I mean, I saw a recent IDC thing that said private cloud is gonna continue on in the years ahead. Yeah.
Yeah, and, and, and that's, I'm surprised by how many customers, they really had a cloud application problem, not a cloud hosting problem. Mm -hmm. Like what they really wanted was velocity and automation. The fact that they might publicly or privately host that, you know, velocity and automation, it was sort of a second tier problem for them. And so that, that's, I think, the unique insight of Pivotal is let's attack the cloud application problem. James, I think you said it. That's a lot of good stuff. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. I'll send you the link. We can all tweet about it and uh, look forward to the future of uh, Pivotal. Great to be here. Thank you. Thank you.